Well, Dr. Amanda Mortimer is an author as well as a neuro-linguistic programming coach. She is here to tell us all about what that actually is, as well as her new book, This Is It, which aims to encourage people to make serious life changes. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. It is lovely to have you here. First up, can you explain to us what exactly is neuro, or NLP, neuro-linguistic programming? Yeah, it's a catchy title, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely written by a marketeer. Rolls, rolls off, off the, the tongue. tongue. <laughs> um, the easiest way to describe it really is, you know, we buy apps for your iPhone mm. and if an app's not working we delete it because we go this is not working for us so we just you know go in delete and, and then we install one that we do want so NLP in many respects is like that for your neurology so you kind of go this behavior that I'm doing on a daily basis is not working I need to eject it or delete it and that's what we can do with NLP quickly effectively in less than an hour and then let's install something that is going to serve you oh I like yeah, that that's yeah. a great yeah. description yeah, that's <laughs> great kind description. of the easiest is, way to describe it is it linked Dodger to hypnotherapy in any way? It is linguistically. So um, the, the, the founders, you know, back in the 70s, one of them was a, a, a doctor of uh, linguistics. So there's some lovely hypnotic um, phrases used in there, but that's not really it. Right. It really is looking at what's what's happening in the brain that's not serving the person, uh, flipping that out on an, on an unconscious level. What we mean is using the techniques that work underneath the radar. So if I, if I was to ask you to do something really simple, just fold your arms if you can. Okay, cool. That was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now unfold them. Now fold them the opposite way around. Ah. <laughs> It's a little trick. Oh, so, no, I just don't know what I was. was that it's tricky, well? though, isn't it? Well, it's tricky. So that. the first time that you did it, you just automatically, yes. it's subconscious, yeah. that's mm. how you guys fold your arms. But when I ask you to do it purposefully, you employ the conscious part of your brain, and it feels a bit awkward. Mm. So what NLP does is work with the unconscious part, that, that where the, all the habits, all the, all the behaviours are stored. 95% of our daily behaviour comes from our unconscious. Wow, that is actually yeah. fascinating. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your early career? How did you get to this? Uh, I actually had a fantastic time in makeup um, be just now because uh, I used to work for Estee Lauder. So I Did had you? 16 years with the Lauder Corporation, which was just awesome. And I got into human development when I was 19 and a half. I was wow. the youngest um, sales, uh, well, training executive for the Lauder Corporation at 19 and a half and spent 16 years, you know, educating people in terms of customer service and psychology, the sales of, uh, the psychology of sales mm. and service. And then I, I left the Lauder Corporation and thought I need to learn more about, you know, how to help people effectively and studied NLP, uh, was hooked. And I'm still studying it to this day. I'm aligned with uh, my mentor in Canada, Dr. Kim Redman, and I'm becoming a master trainer of NLP. So it's like, it's a passion. It, you know, cut me in the middle and it'll say NLP kind of uh, thing. No, <laughs> no, because I've had a good read through the book and I think it's brilliant. And, you know, I want to talk to you more about that. But just before we move on, has this helped in your own personal journey? Massively, yeah, um, hugely. I'm, I just recently remarried. Um, I've got a beautiful wife, Sarah, uh, which was a curveball because, in many respects, you know, I, I lost my late husband of 19 years to, to cancer, and I'd been married previously for five years to a man. So this was like, for me, it was a big shock. For Sarah, it was a big shock. And imagine family and friends like, you're not gay. What are you doing? <laughs> what? Yes. Um, so there was uh, literally the tools that uh, are in the book. Sarah and I have used on a daily basis. We've had loss. Uh, we lost Sarah's mum a month before we we got married, mm -hmm. um, which you know was was a huge shock. So I, I think to say that. Um, the tools really work, I can give testament to that. So why did you decide to write this? Uh, look, not everybody has the luxury of engaging with a coach. Your Life Live It is a brand. It's, it's just turned 10 years old uh, last week, in fact. Uh, Your Life Live It is my company. And we have 20 coaches that we have all around the world that help people on a daily basis. Not everyone can afford that in, in a time perspective and also financial. So I wanted to get the tools into people's hands in the most cost-effective and time-effective way possible. So hence the book. But not only is it just a book, we've also got the videos, as, as you were saying, Mike, you enjoyed those yesterday, and the audios as well, um, to be able to help people that have different learning styles. Mm. And also, you can't necessarily run a process on yourself if you're reading it. You need mm. somebody to guide you through it. So all the video clips were filmed in a studio in London, and all the audios were um, recorded in a studio in Portugal. So it's kind of, it's a, an all singing, all dancing package. No, like. brilliantly done. I do love the, the video clips and the way you've incorporated, you know, modern technology into it. How does it apply to, say, someone like my life? What, what, if I read this, what am I trying to do? Where do we start? Sorry. <laughs> 
because routine is quite comfortable. It's yeah. really hard to change that behaviour because we, you know, we join a gym, we go, we we'll go, and then a month down the track, we're back to old behaviour. Will that book help me change some of that? Yeah, it will. So one of the entire chapters is on installing new habits. Right. And so people, you know, we, we live our lives habitually. Mm. Uh, we find ourselves ordering coffee when we decided at New Year we were just going to have green tea. Mm. And when did when did that start to happen? It's because it's unconscious. So absolutely, re um, realigning habits, deleting old habits um, is, is in the book for, for sure. Excellent. We'll have a very good read of that yes. one, both of us. <laughs> um, you dedicate it to your Uncle Peter. I did. Well, yeah. who's, who's Uncle Peter? So Uncle Peter is kind of one of those uncles that wasn't a real uncle. He sort of borrowed, borrowed my dad's orbital sander kind of uncle. <laughs> yeah, um, true, yeah. And uh, he, he sadly died very suddenly of a heart attack at, at the age mm. of 55. And I was in New Zealand. And so I called my auntie and said, look, when I get back to England, I really want to spend some time with you and help you in any way I can. And one of the things she asked me to do was clean out Uncle Peter's office because it was emotionally charged. You know, he'd only just been in there the week mm. before or whatever. And so I, I left his briefcase until last. And when I un, uh, sort of unpacked his briefcase, which I needed to because his work wanted papers back, I found this whole file on a life coaching diploma with the Newcastle University. Wow. And I was like, he's literally enlisted to do this. My auntie didn't know. He, he sort of done it, wow. you know, he just wanted to get some uh, awesome tools. And so I uh, spoke to the university and said, may I take Uncle Peter's place? And they, they said yes. So I don't think the journey would have taken uh, the, the, the course that it has without me finding those papers. So hence it's dedicated to my Uncle Peter. And one of the great things about the interaction of this book is I guess you get a lot of feedback. So have, have you, it must be so nice getting success stories. And you know, what, Can you give us a, a, an example of some of those? Yes, I can. Um, I think when you work with children, uh, the writings on the wall because uh, you know a child it, generally a child comes to see you because of, of something that's not serving them and recently I worked with a nine-year-old little girl online and uh, she had separation anxiety what, right. which means that since the age of well for six years she's been sleeping at the bottom of mum and dad's bed okay. in a little makeshift bed you can see how that could be a problem be bad for everybody yeah. really and yeah. uh, and now it's getting to summer camp so she wants to be able to go to camp and she wants to be able to spend the night you know, on, her, on her own and, and be confident. And literally it's one session um, and we, we made some changes and then the second session was actually targeting the problem. And she has a little chart that's in the book, ironically, and I, I can tell you with great, um, great humbleness actually, she's got 16 ticks, which meant, means oh. she's slept 16 nights consecutively in her own room, just because she's done some rewiring. So I don't do the changing, the client does the changing. Our coaches all know that. It's the client, all we hold is a remote control to help the client make the changes. Oh, wow, so exciting. Mm. You're so passionate. It's, 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 it's invigorating really, isn't well, it? Well no, you just go back to the folding arms exercise right at the start and that will help explain what this book can do for you. And yeah. Amanda's book, This Is It, is available now and for further information about the book or about Amanda, you can check out her website, Your Life Live It. Yeah, lovely to have you on the cafe. Thank you, Thank you. so Thank much, you. Doctor. Thank you.